Hey, I'm here with uh, Tim Clark. Uh, we're going to talk about REOs and uh, different ways of financing uh, real estate projects. And uh, take it away, Tim. Cool. Well, whenever you're dealing with uh, with a seller, there's there's one of ways you need to control. You either control the price, which you get the deal at a, at a, at a lower price, or you control the terms. It's okay if they want the full price. It's okay to give them the full price, but then you have to learn how to control the terms. How much down, how much per month, and then what the, what the final price will be. If they want, if they if if they really want to get rid of it, then the other part is control the price, um, and you can figure that that out by the ARV times 0.65 percent minus the minus. That, that's what I use. I just use minus the repairs, and that's that's basically where where my price point is as far as price. And then if I'm going to wholesale, I'm going to additionally after that I'm going to take a wholesale fee off which I'm going to charge a little bit extra for wholesaling, so I'm going to take that off the price too. So basically, I, I'm just, the, the biggest thing I've learned is find whatever plan you're going to go with, to, however you're going to learn it, stick with it, and act. Uh, one of the mistakes I made is I bought a different, bunch of different plans and got, got, got distracted, got what they call paralysis of analysis, <laughs> and and just my mind got so jumbled up in learning which it's always learned life is a learning process this is an industry that's so huge you can do so many things in so many ways but and it's constantly learning and I'll still be learning um, but you just got to decide learn and act learn and act go find your cash buyers find out what they want find out what they're looking for find out what their criteria is Find out where they want it, and cater to them. Go find, go get, go get what they want. Right. Find your niche and yep. uh, just become, you know, become an expert in that. Because right. if you try to become an expert in so many different things, you're mm -hmm. really gonna. There's just not enough hours it's, in the day. It, it, it's like a lion trying to hunt a bunch of different. You know, a lion when he zeroes on what he wants, he finds his prey and he goes and gets it. He doesn't get distracted with, wow, there's a big one over here and there's a big one. He, he goes after it. And that's essentially the same thing you're going to do is you're going to say, okay, if I'm going to start with wholesaling, I'm going to get doing wholesaling really, really good. Once you got wholesaling nailed down, once you got your system set up, once you got it going to where basically your the systems are doing everything for you, mm -hmm. then move on to whatever. Um, move on to if you want to do rehabs. If you want to do, then get that nailed down really good. Then, if you want to go to creative financing, go to uh, subject twos, lease options. Learn, learn that. Get that na nailed down. Then, if you want to do buy and hold, if you want to, you know, rental properties. Um, and then there's there, there's there's so many things that you can do. Those are the four basic. But you can go to commercial. If you want to go to commercial properties, I mean. Uh, you can you can do commercial properties and commercial properties the price points a lot higher but you make a lot more money. So Tim, mom, um, you you found me on Craigslist, right? Yeah. Gave me and gave me a call. Um, so that you know that was you know just one form of my advertising. You, you also have a couple of Craigslist ads as well. Yeah, I do. And uh, wasn't it funny when um, one guy called me and then yeah. <laughs> and then you called yeah. me like 15 minutes later yeah, trying to kinda... wholesale it to me? That's kind of <laughs> that was pretty funny. That, that's good though because well, our I mean... uh, our advertising is working. Yeah, I'm just trying to act. I mean, I, um, yeah, it was kind of embarrassing, actually. <laughs> oh, no, it's, it's but, all right, man. I, I just don't buy in that area, so yeah. I wouldn't have bought it um, anyways. But, you know, it's kind of funny, but, you know, also also shows that some of our stuff is actually working. Yeah, so. yeah. And it, and and there, there's other ways of uh, advertising. You, you can direct direct mailing, and, and there, there, there's, there's a lot of different ways that, that and you just, you just got to find out in your area, because each area is different. Each area of the country is different. Each area, some way of advertising works different. I mean, Craigslist is free. It's that's the easiest free way. But you know, you can you can do direct, direct mails. Mail, you can do signs. bandit signs. You can do. Um, there's actually different companies who help SEO your website, search engine optimize your website to get you at the, the and they charge you a small fee and. And I'm not going to say names, but there are ones out there that they'll intentionally make take your website and get it to where it's one of the top two. When somebody goes search on Google for sell my house fast or whatever, mm -hmm. then 
your website comes at the at the one top within the top two or three of of the searches, and that's another way you know to to have a professional website and. Um, can you kind of explain like what an REO is and um, kind of how you're kind of getting into that and, and what? An that? REO is basically what the what the bank has already foreclosed on a house, and after foreclosed, they they have they have that property and they need to get rid of that property. They have thousands and thousands and thousands of REOs. Some markets more than other, and basically what you do is you find the agent in your area because. There's other ways, uh, but the way that I'm familiar with right now that I'm working with is is find a local agent that deals specifically or is the is the big REO leader in that area. Create a relationship with them. Tell them um, be confident, but not be cocky, and then say say um, hey, I'm going to be your man. You know I'm going to and what, what what you what that you don't want to waste your time, but what what they want to see is that you can move. You can move those. You can move those properties. When they say, "Hey, here's ten properties," they know that those ten that that agent knows that you're gonna you're gonna have buyers for those ten, and they're gonna be gone. They're gonna be sold out of their hair, and they're gonna get their their commission. Um, you want to make sure they get their commission. Um, if you can give them the, if you can, you can work directly with them and, and sell it to your buyer to your cash buyers. They can get the whole six percent commission, and man, an agent that's making this whole six percent commission or whatever it is, and they know that hey, I get it to so and so, he's they're going to be gone. So I don't got to worry. So an REO is um, like a foreclosed house that the bank owns and they want to get rid of. Right. So you can get them at discounted prices. Yes, yeah, they'll they'll sell it for pennies on the dollar. They really for the for the most part the ba the banks don't care about how much they make out of them. They just want them gone. Because they, they they have thousands of them, their acquisition managers in the banks or the 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 the, the managers that have to get rid of them. Uh, I guess it's not acquisition, but the the managers in the banks that need to get rid of it. They just they, they want them gone. Well, like let's say someone has a mortgage out on a house. Don't they want to at least get back um, the mortgage amount from the in house? some in some cases, uh, depending on how how big the mortgage is. Yeah, but in some cases they'll take the loss just to get it gone. It's, each case is different because they're paying like taxes and accumulating yeah, they're costs. they're paying. Well, it. they're paying taxes. They're having to pay the main, the maintenance of the lawn, the maintenance of the upkeep in the building. Um, they have to pay. You know, if if nobody's living in it, depending on the area, people could be going in there and tearing copper out of it, and you know, squatting it, or mm -hmm. you know, I mean, they're they're. More than likely, in, in medium to lower areas, people go in there and squat those houses. They'll go in there. There's one house that I had somebody try to sell, and I tried to sell it. I tried to help them, but somebody went in there, and it's been sitting for a while. They tore all the copper out of it. They got it's got to be totally replumbed. They tore all the wire wiring out of the walls. Wow. And I mean, you know, who 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 knows what else they've done in there? But I mean, and so there's a liability issue for them. Plus, it's a cost. You know, it's just the the longer it sits, the longer it deteriorates. The long there's not anybody taking care of it, and it's just it's just a cost to them. So anybody watching this in, and they want to get into REOs, their goal should be to find um, local REO agents. That's the first in, step in the area because not all agents are um, REO agents. No, they, they all can sell their REOs, but not all agents are your big sellers. They're not the ones that the bank dumps them on. Right. And you want to find the ones that. That, and that's the first step, and then then you, then the second step is is a uh, is of course before you want to do that you want to make sure that you have some buyers you you have a good buyers list, so you know that when you get them, you know you're going to be able to get them out if you're if you're wholesaling them I guess right if, if you're, you're wholesaling you're right. flip them or you, or you could or you can you know you can buy them yourself and turn them in either buy them yourself and rehab them, mm -hmm. or you could buy them yourself and hope, buy and hold them. I, I remember talking to you um, several weeks ago about um, kind of like higher end properties and people would like rent them. What, what was that called? And kind of um, get there's into that? there's a few different ways you can do it. One's called subject to, okay, and that's subject where to. subject to is basically where you take you take your your company takes over the mortgage and leaves it in the name of the person of the house. They leave it in their name, but you pay like for instance, you pay the you. you um, if so and so is selling a house, you negotiate, 
you say okay we're gonna take over your mortgage leave it in your name I'm gonna pay the mortgage a month ahead of time so it's paid one month ahead of time and each month you're gonna get either either email or paper documents saying that mortgage payments been made and then then what you can do is you can turn around and and for a little bit more down you know and nego negotiate the down payment um, there was one case not for me but I know of a case of a man who had a beautiful house he had a he had a high security clearance he uh, he had to move because of his job and if he would if his house would have went into foreclosure he would have lost his security clearance mm. so he said I'll, I'll, I'll give it to you for nothing down and what I'm making what my payments are so it's so it's called subject to and you're taking over the mortgage payments so the person so, doesn't lose the house right you pay, take over the mortgage payments subject to their basically their name stays on the mortgage but you're making the payments and you're getting an interest rate from that or right right you're, you're just making their payments for, for instance say Joe sells me a house for his payments a thousand dollars a month mm -hmm. and the optimal rental for that house in that area is thirteen hundred dollars a month say he he says okay five percent down so then I'll I'll bring Sam over here whose credit isn't quite as good he can't qualify with conventional funding and I'll I'll say okay you put 10 percent down and pay me 13 or 1400 dollars a month so then I'm getting instead of five percent I get the 10 percent I pay the five percent down I'm making a thousand dollar payment payment but he's living in the house I'm not I don't fix it I'm not responsible for any repairs he's buying it and then I'm making four or five hundred dollars whatever you know if he's fourteen hundred dollars a month I'm making an extra four hundred dollars a month right paying a thousand he's paying the four and, and so that then that's the next step is find somebody to that's looking for a, a nice house that can't afford um, or can't get conventional funding because whatever reason they can't qualify and there's quite a few people that have money to put down but they just can't qualify with conventional funding and so you're helping Joe get rid of his house you're helping Sam get into a house and it's it's a win-win-win I mean everybody's happy and you're making extra money yeah, it's um, another unique way in uh, is. real estate not so many people and then you about. can do lease options with lease options is a, is a contract with directly with the owner not you're not making the payment you're paying the owner himself and that's that's basically a lease option and there's many other different ways of of creative financing I mean it's just it's there's so many different options that, that, that you could do like there's like land contract land contracts um, yeah there's there's so many different things probably more than on, honestly that I know about right now I mean, <laughs> hey, we're still learning right so but, yeah it's always a learning process you know you never but one thing one, one thing you don't want to do is especially if you're getting started which is in my case um, and what I did is get consumed with learning and not not create action because if you're just learning and you're not acting you're not going to get anywhere just you know you're just going to be stuck your wheels are going to be spinning you want to actually go out and there and make mistakes and learn from well, them and or or learn and then you'll, you know we'll, suc we'll succeed invest in a plan from whoever you want to invest in to learn it but then act on it you know go out there and, and if you don't if you have you know go do go put band of signs out go knock on some doors go ask your title company for a list of pre foreclosures and go knock on their doors you know they're that list of pre foreclosures more than likely they're going to be losing their house to foreclosure you might be able to buy it and settle it and keep them from going into foreclosure right um, and so it's just you know if you've got money to invest there's there's different plans and different systems that you can buy that that will do everything for you you know um, you, you can get done for you to where basically it just brings everything right to your front that costs money if you don't have money you got to get out there and do the work you have any like specific goals for 2017 kind of well I just new year here? My, my goal for for 2017 is by the end of the year to be a to be a situation where I can do this full-time to be making enough to where I'm debt free and to where I can start into real estate full time. Um, of course my immediate goal is to get it get get going, get some deals done. You know, I just and um, 
and so I've, I'm getting my cash buyer list up. I'm, I'm getting, I've, I've got a man who's who's coaching me, who's helping me, and we're just gonna get going. And by 2007, by the end of 2017, Lord willing, I'll be able to say bye bye to my job, and you know, not have to be tied down to a job, and and it's still gonna be work, but and then the next year or two hopefully be to the point where I can be systematized and and be able to go do it take my wife on a cruise or you know just right. go go do what we want to do when we want to do it you know get away from the nine to five and uh, yeah and get away from free. being stuck and yeah and you know anybody can do it but the thing is is um, you have to be willing to do it it, ta- it takes work at first. amen brother it's, it's <laughs> not you know um, it's if, if, if you want a job where you just want to sit on the couch and, and make money, this don't start. You know, just, just um, if you want something that you're willing to work at and in the future it will give you more freedom. Uh, there's been more millionaires made more in real estate investing than in any other, than any other business. In any in, in the other industry, yep. And so it can be done. And, and the thing is, is, you have to figure out your why. Why do you want to do it, you know? And if 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 you if it's just because you want to have more money, if that's the only reason why, you've got to have a stronger reason because that that that's not going to last. My why is is first of all I want to take care of my family. I want my wife to know that if something was to happen to me, that she's taken care of. And I want to be a blessing to other people. You know, I mean, um, I don't have. Honestly, I don't desire to have a nice big house. I don't desire to have a nice fancy car. That's not my goal. My goal is to to be able to um, see others that have needs and anonymously meet those needs. Mm-hmm. I have friends in other in, in South American, Central and South American countries. Uh, God's allowed me to speak both languages, English and Spanish, equally. Oh. And um, I have friends who are pastors of churches in Mexico and Honduras and Guatemala and Ecuador and Peru and I, and I would I would love to be a anonymously be a blessing to them and to me it would be nothing better to be able to just anonymously give twenty thousand dollars to somebody who to a pastor of a church who needs to build a building or right a mission or see see somebody in your church that or in your of your friends who lost their job or um, for whatever reason, need financial help, and just to anonymously, not so they know it's you and you get all the glory, but just to say, hey, go to whoever you're, somebody who can anonymously say, hey, pay their mortgage for two months and don't tell them who did it. Or yeah, that'd be awesome. Take, take, you know, drop off in their, you know, something like that, and just be a blessing to people. For, 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 for estimating properties, like what what do you do? Kind of like it's called the after roughly. repair value or the fair market value. The easy, the best way is if you can get a real estate agent to do it for you. That's that's the very most accurate, the best way for them to do it for you. They have the the MLS and they can basically do it quick. If you can't get a real estate agent to do it for you, what you do is you go you find the property, you find properties that have sold within the last six months, preferably within a mile and a half, mile and a half, or at the most two miles of the current property, you find properties that ha- that have sold comparable, you know, if, if it's the same type, whether it's a cape, whether it's a ranch, whether the same type of house, the same square footage, or the close to that, the same room count, same bedroom, same bath. Um, if there are pictures, of houses that have sold, if, if you can look at the pit, sometimes they have pictures on Zillow or whatever, every other, there's different other, I personally use, use Zillow uh, just for the, and and basically what you do is you, you get the highest, the one that sold for the highest per square foot, and the one that sold for the lowest per square foot. Of houses that are comparable to the one you, you have. Once you find the highest and the lowest, you take that average. For example, if a house sold for $100 a square foot and a house sold for $50 a square foot, you take the average of the 100, you take 
it would be what sixty five seventy dollars per square foot would be the average right somewhere in that and then you just take that times the square foot of your house and that's a close that's a reasonably close after repair value and and you, you can use other uh, there's other different and so that's that's basically what I do to find out what the ARV or, or the fair market value if you have access to the MLS that's the easiest way or if you have a, a realtor a real estate agent that is you can work with that would help you um, there's even a lot of people don't know that if you can find a broker they can actually give you a, you don't have to have your real estate license to have access for the MLS you can ask them to be a associate mm -hmm. and they can actually give you your, your, your own access to the MLS to be an associate to, to, to a realtor or to a broker. Yeah, it's a good way to, um, to find deals. Yeah, you can find deals be, to, to find out exactly what the house is going to sell for and so on. But, and there's other ways that, you know, that, but that's a way that kind of works for me is just to, to get the average and then and then you want to look at what how and once you figure that out you want to you want to see what the houses around are selling for for current basically the same house what are houses selling for you know what your competition is know what you know because what you figure out they might be selling for a lot more or they might be selling for a lot less and then kind of kind of know what you're going up against and then because if you know houses, are, if you figure out your ARV is sixty thousand, and a house equal to that house already fixed up is selling for forty or whatever, or twenty or I mean, whatever. I mean, you just want to know. You want to know kind of what is close. Right. And you want to look at the condition of the house on the right. street too. Right. Because you don't want to make your house um, nicer than the other ones. Because just well, putting more money into it doesn't mean you're going to you get want, more out of it. You want to be careful you don't over rehab. Right. I mean, if it's a if it's a high, really high neighborhood, you know, you want to make a nice rehab. But if it's just a middle class neighborhood, you can do spend less on rehab, still do a good job, and still get the money out of it. And so you don't want you want to be careful. You don't, and that's that's one one thing. You know, it's really easy, and money goes real fast if you start putting, you know, nice things in a house, and, and the house isn't going to bring it. Then you just lose your money. But if it's in a nice area and you want to get a nice price, you're going to have nicer things. And so your rehab costs are going to cost more. And so, but that's, 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 that's one, about the gist of it. Yeah, that's about the best, you know, 